Have you ever had one of those incidents with nature where the result is that you feel really humbled? And, uh, you know, sometimes I laugh when I hear things like, oh, save the planet, as if we human beings have, <laughs> we can't save anything. I mean, we can stop messing up, but we, we cannot turn the planet one way or another. We destroy things, but we're ultimately quite insignificant. And in the sense that, look, Earth has been here before it was called Earth. When we're gone, it's still going to be here. And um, I think it helps, it would help if more people, even though they don't, uh, had these kind of interactions where you realize, oh, how small you are relative to the planet. And I have had these moments, they come and they go, I then unplanned, of course. But there was one in particular. This is back when I lived in Nigeria. And so we lived in Nsukka, which is a university campus in, in a sort of the northern part of the southeast, if that makes any sense. And uh, one of the characteristics of this area with the hills. So you've got this campus and it's surrounded by a number of hills. And I had this habit of climbing up. There were two hills I would climb up. There was one that a lot of people climbed up. And there's this other one that not so many cl people climbed up because it was, yeah, it was a bit rough to get there. So the, the hill that most people climbed up, I mean, it's, when I say a lot, it's not as if the majority of people in Nsukka went up this hill. No, it's just that there were people would sometimes go up there to have a picnic and stuff like that. And you had this wonderful view because it was sort of longish hill. So from one end, you could see the campus and um, beyond that, you'd see it in Sukkah. And then beyond that, you'd see other hills. And then at the other end, it, uh, looking north, you would see certain villages that were close to Nsukka mm -hmm. and of course, a few other hills further away. And if ever I was in a bit of a mood, which <laughs> as a teenager was a frequent um, occurrence, so I just, I needed space. I would always want space if I felt grumpy. So I'd climb this hill, it was a great place. You just have everything in front of you. And I did this from time to time. And one day I did this during the rainy season. And in the rainy season, um, you had this sort of, you could tell the rain was coming. So the rainy season, it wasn't 24 hours, a day. it wasn't rain 24 hours a day. In certain places it could, I know in Lagos it could get, it could be wet just all day long, but not really heavy rain, that sort of drizzly rain. But in the east where I was, I don't remember it being, often being raining continuously for 24 hours. You would, it would rain every single day. But what would happen is um, you'd suddenly get this wind. There'd just be this wind. It would blow and you'd look and these clouds would just, you know, where there had been sun, the clouds would become really heavy and dark. And these were sort of biblical level clouds because they seemed to be rolling. Often here in the Netherlands, I see this dark uh, gray, but it's quite, um, shall I say, monotonous. It, it's, it's evenly spread. Uh, by the way, they're builders, and that's what you're hearing in the background. But there you had these huge, dark, dark clouds. And I was standing there looking and seeing these clouds, thinking, wow, this is amazing. And slowly something happened, and it occasionally happened, is that prior to the rain, there'd be this electrical storm. And you could just sense the air get really weird. It would be very dark. And for example, the hairs on my arms would, would go up. I did have hair on my head then, but it, it didn't go up. The hair on my arms uh, went up. Uh, I rem remembered such an occasion from way back in school in Oxford on the upper plateau of the rugby field. Once you had something very spooky, it, was, it suddenly became very dark and the air was charged with static electricity. And most of the kids, their hair began to go up. Of course, my being a black kid with the curly hair, my hair didn't go anywhere. But most of the kids, you sort of went, <laughs> their hair floating in the air. It was like, what's going on? What's going on? So you had a similar situation on this hill in, in Sukkot. Of course, the only hair 
going up was my the hair on my forearms. And then there was lightning. And this lightning was crazy because it, it didn't, often I think of lightning going down like this, but this lightning seemed to just run across the sky. So, and it would split as it ran. And so, you'd, it, and it was sort of a kind of fuchsia purple color. It wasn't white at all. So it would go across and I think, wow, this is amazing. And then came the thunder. And th there was this thunderclap. I mean, I was used to these thunderclaps because I heard them already if I was at home or somewhere else. But here I was just out there on this hill, exposed on a hill. So it's me, there's my head, and then there's, there's the sky. So if the lightning decided to come in my direction, I would have been fried. I didn't even think of this, but it was the thunder. The thunder was so loud. It, was, it really felt as if I understood why in ancient times people would have heard thunder and believed there was some force, some mighty, mighty force beyond uh, our, our vision that was shaking the heavens or doing something like that because this, this thunder shook me to my bones and it really made me, I mean, even at that age, I wasn't, I wasn't a, a scared person, but this scared me, it really scared me because the power was, it was beyond anything I could imagine. This wasn't, it wasn't like an explosion. Look, I've been in no wars, so I have never heard dynamites. Yeah, once in a quarry I heard dynamite explode, but I haven't really heard those kind of big explosions. But this was a very, very humbling experience. And of course, I suddenly remembered those little laws about try not to be the highest thing in a field during a lightning storm. And I'm the highest thing on that hill. Uh, thankfully, the fact that I'm telling this story means nothing happened. But um, it was uh, one of those days when nature gave me a lesson in natural huma humility. <laughs>